Anyone who is skeptical of cryptocurrency these days is considered a moron. How could you not believe in Bitcoin? In fact, just a few days ago, Peter Thiel called Warren Buffett an enemy and a sociopath just because he didn't believe in cryptocurrency. So, um, enemy number one. I think the sort of the, the sociopathic uh, grandpa from Omaha. Needless to say, crypto has become a religion. But just before you attack me in the comment section, I want us to answer a simple question. Why? Why are so many people investing in crypto? Most people invest in crypto because it's an asset that increases in value. Did you know if you were to put $10,000 into Bitcoin back in 2010, that same $10,000 would now be worth $96,939,950. The primary objective of anyone who wants to invest in cryptocurrency is that the demand for crypto will continue to rise till one day when the whole world will be using crypto as their currency so a Bitcoin becomes $1 million. This way, as a crypto investor, I could make a lot of money. And that's the problem. You see, money by its nature must not be an asset of value. When people tell you that there's a newly invented money, that is, cryptocurrency, that appreciates and would continue to appreciate in value, that should be a red flag for you. Many crypto evangelists speak against fiat currency like dollars because it depreciates every day. Good evening from London. UK inflation rose to a new 30-year high last month. Let's find out uh, more about the impact of rising inflation and the increasing cost of living. Inflation's bite has been particularly pronounced with some groups of Americans. But the inflationary monetary system is a good thing for the world's economy. In fact, a deflationary monetary system like cryptocurrency will never become the world's monetary system because if it does, it will destroy our world and send us back to the Stone Age. In the year 1930, the English economist John Maynard Keynes published this essay in the Economic Possibilities for Our Grandchildren. Keynes predicted that in the next few years, precisely when his grandchildren become adults, most other people in the world will be working only two days or 15 hours per week. Among many of his 1930 predictions, Keynes also suggested that people would soon be having a lot of money saved in the bank. While Keynes' prediction that the world would be so prosperous as to afford working two days a week made him happy, the other part of his prediction that people will be so rich that they'll have a lot of money saved in the bank made Keynes depressed. And there's a reason for that. That reason was explained in John Maynard Keynes' 1936 book, The General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money. In chapter 7, page 84 of the book, while Keynes was talking about the negative effect of saving money, he wrote, and I quote, For although the amount of his own saving is unlikely to have any significant influence on his own income, the reactions of the amount of his consumption on the incomes of others makes it impossible for all individuals simultaneously to save any given sums. Every such attempt to save more by reducing consumption will so affect incomes that the attempt necessarily defeats itself. Economists call that concept today the paradox of thrift, which essentially means that any economy in which too many people save money will collapse. This is the reason why every country in the world maintains an inflationary monetary system, a system in which money keeps losing its value. Our longer-run goal continues to be inf an inflation rate of 2%. Because an inflationary monetary system discourages people from hoarding money, money's exchange hands fast, effectively, and continuously, which then makes the economy grow. Now, think about what cryptocurrency is. Cryptocurrency is a deflationary monetary system, a monetary system in which money appreciates in value. Don't forget, the reason why we want to buy a piece of cryptocurrency is that we hope that its value will continue to appreciate. Bro, you need to get in on this Bitcoin boom. Crypto, bro? In just six months, I've multiplied my money and the value's only going up. The reason why we buy a piece of this asset is to keep it, expecting that the prices go up and thus makes us rich. Now, let's imagine the world every crypto evangelist is hoping for. The world in which all the fiat money is replaced with cryptocurrency. What does such a world look like? 
Well, since cryptocurrency is a deflationary monetary system, a monetary system in which the value of money appreciates, it means people are motivated to hoard money or save much more. Because people know that the value of the money they have is continuously appreciating, they'll be motivated to hoard money or save much more, which then results in a collapsed economy, hence the paradox Keynes talked about. This is how it happens. Let's call this guy Smith. Smith is a rich man who has a million dollars in the bank. In an inflationary monetary system, Smith would be afraid that his $1 million would soon be worth $900,000 if he keeps it in the bank. Because of this fear, Smith would start thinking of what he can do with the money. At the end of the day, Smith might decide to start a new business, invest in real estate, or buy some new toys. Whatever Smith does with his $1 million, it will be a good thing for the economy. Now, let's imagine the same scenario under a deflationary monetary system, which cryptocurrency is. Smith is rich, so he has $1 million worth of cryptocurrency. What do you think he will do? Well, keep that crypto forever, because its value goes up every day. Why would you take the risk to invest your $1 million in a business or even real estate when that money can just sit there and appreciate in value? Since the $1 million you have in Bitcoin today could be worth $20 million in the next two years, why would you bother to start a business, invest in the stock market, or even spend it? Now, you can see the problem. Because people who have a lot of money are motivated to hoard it, they want to invest such money in businesses, real estate, or new ventures. As a result, we'll have fewer innovations, fewer products and services in the market fewer competition, and of course, fewer jobs. You don't have to be an economist to know what that leads to. Now, let's talk about people who don't have a lot of money. Since the whole world is now using cryptocurrency, a deflationary monetary system in which the value of your money naturally appreciates by itself, even people who don't have a lot of money are motivated to hoard money. It means those people who want to buy new cars would be motivated to first hold their money and wait till it appreciates. It means those people who want to change their wardrobe would be motivated to hoard their money for the next one or two years. It means so many people in the economy consume less and less and less as they try to save more and more money to become overnight millionaires. The result of that is a collapsed economy in which nobody has any money to save. Hence, the paradox. Take for example, countries like the US, the UK and others could have operated a deflationary monetary system if they wanted to. In fact, if you're a student of history, you must know that for 90 years between the years 1820 and 1910, the purchasing power of a dollar remained the same. This means that if you had kept $1,000 in the bank in 1820 and withdrew it in 1910, your $1,000 would still buy the same thing it ought to buy 90 years earlier. But that was a bad thing for an economy because it then meant that people are encouraged to save money. That's why when on 23rd December 1913, the Federal Reserve of America was established, one of the first things the bank did was to devalue the dollars. By 1920, just seven years after its establishment, Federal Reserve had destroyed the value of the dollars by 56.1%. Today, if you go to the official website of the American Federal Reserve, this is what you'll see. This is what I found on the website of the Bank of England. So, you get the point. Money by nature must not be something of value, something people are motivated to hoard. If any country's economy must grow, people in such an economy must be discouraged from hoarding money. If tomorrow we suddenly have a world or country where everyone uses Bitcoin, then since the motivation to buy Bitcoin is to make money, people will naturally want to hoard their money. It then means that less and less money goes around. People who have billions of dollars will keep it since it's appreciating, and people who have hundred dollars also keep it since it can become a thousand dollars. No one is motivated to invest in research and development. No one is motivated to invest in new technologies. No one is motivated to innovate or compete. No one is motivated to start a new company, because why would you take the risk to start a company that might not succeed, when you can simply hold on to your money and watch it increase in value? What you see next is less innovation, fewer businesses, less competition, fewer products, less consumption, and of course, fewer jobs. 
every economic progress the world has made in the last 100 years will suddenly collapse. We'll start having worse and worse products and services because more and more people are selling their businesses to hold on to money since money naturally appreciates in value. I'm sorry, but such a world can only exist in our dream. Thanks for watching.